Today, I've made the trip to Gary Ball to see what he's been up to. Dripping with carbon fibre. You're gonna get a lot of stick. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's all part of the fun though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is, it is. Like a McLaren. Twin turbo LS. Could easily do a thousand if I wanted it to. Time to show everyone the party piece. Today, I've made the trip to pay a very overdue visit to my good friend, Gary Ball, to see what he's been up to with this beast. My beautiful girlfriend, Kat, is here with me as well, and Gary's friend, John. If you're a regular viewer of my content, click the like button now because it's a massive help. Alternatively, if you're new to the channel, click subscribe now and welcome. I'm Marcus Hayes, and today, we're gonna get an update on Gary's twin turbo LS powered Mark 1 Escort <coughs> TVR. It's fair to say that Gary's been a bad influence for me with my carbon fiber habit. I've got loads of Gary's bits fitted to my old Banger Escorts. If you need any fiberglass or carbon fiber panels for your car, whether it be an Escort or anything, definitely get in touch with Gary. I'll leave his links in the description of this video. This very busy workshop is literally littered with molds <laughs> that Gary uses to produce his fiberglass and carbon fiber panels. He's actually got some bits that are for sale at the moment. We've got this chopped carbon fiber bonnet and boot lid that used to be fitted to Gary's Beast. These are actually for sale. Pretty cheap compared to uh, the usual cost of these parts. There's also some fiberglass Mark One Escort doors up there that Gary used to take molds from, which are also for sale. But yeah, check out Gary's Instagram for prices on those bits. One thing that Gary's just about to make a mold for is Mark II Escort bonnets. Maybe one day I'll get one for Heidi, who knows? But if you're in the market for a carbon fiber bonnet for your Mark II, definitely get in touch with Gary because he's taking orders right now. Anyway, time to have a look at Gary's Beast, which he's made quite a bit of progress on since the last time I was down here. For those of you that haven't seen this thing before, it is a fiberglass Mark I Escort shell that Gary molded himself. The molds are actually over there. So uh, he could actually make you a whole shell if you was in the market for one, but it's based on a bubble arched Mark I Escort, but he's uh, added his own unique twist by actually making the body wider at the front and uh, yeah, even more at the back. And um, yeah, this thing has got to be the craziest Mark I Escort out there, although beneath it all, it is a TVR. Of course, it's absolutely dripping in Gary's carbon fiber parts, like the bonnet, the grill, this crazy chopped carbon front spoiler with uh, this uh, splitter bit as well. Yeah, everywhere you look, there's just more and more carbon. These are uh, another addition that Gary's put on the car since the last time we saw it. The interior is way more together than last time, so we'll get to that. But yeah, carbon fiber wing mirrors <laughs> and uh, around the back, carbon fiber boot lid and a wing. And this is actually a different wing to the one that was fitted last time I came down here. And yeah, it is absolutely nuts. Look at it. <laughs> These are brackets that Gary's made. Again, these are different than the ones that were fitted before. Got this sort of cross brace in the middle. 
And uh, this wing is actually active now. And that was something Gary was planning to do last time we come down here. We'll show you that in action in a little bit. But yeah, this rear end, well, the car in general is definitely one that's gonna upset the anoraks. It's got these sort of uh, unique rear lights. We've got a sort of charging point in the middle of the rear panel there. <laughs> He's added a tow ball as well, just a, a bit of fun really, but yeah, a really cool grenade design, kind of ties into the color scheme of the car. I mean, just look at the ridiculous diffuser on it. Yeah, this thing is absolutely nuts. The more you walk around it, the more details you sort of hone in on. I mean, look at the huge 17 inch wheels that look right at home under those arches, which are based on bubble arches, but yeah, they are Gary's own unique design. They've been made wider and uh, yeah, they sort of don't have the, the usual pointy top to them. Um, yeah, I really like the design of these arches. This car is absolutely nuts. Look at the exhaust hanging out of the front wings there. The engine is actually more together than last time we were down here as well. We'll have a look at that in a minute, I think. For now though, I'll give you a better look inside the cockpit. Now this thing is very much still a work in progress. The uh, fit and finish of the panels isn't there yet. Um, but yeah, just check out this racy cockpit. Again, dripping with carbon fiber, the dash top, all this panel here, door cards, <laughs> proper full roll cage in this thing. Gary's just laid one seat in it so that I can uh, <laughs> take a cool thumbnail in a little bit. But uh, got the shifter and the fly off handbrake over here. This in the back here, Gary was saying, is the heater. But yeah, it's just, it's just custom. Everything's sort of one of one floor mounted pedals. There's the screen for Gary's fuel tech ECU and stuff. Two air fuel ratio gauges, one for each side of the engine. Um, yeah, it's nuts. Reservoirs on the dash for the clutch and brakes. Fly off steering wheel, or removable steering wheel rather. But yeah, this is absolutely nuts. All this has just been molded and made by Gary. Um, yeah, full fiberglass shell, as I say. Huge tunnel <laughs> housing the gearbox. Yeah, it's just nuts. <laughs> Can't wait to see this thing actually alive and on the road. And um, yeah, it's getting close. If we look down here, there's still a lot of wiring and stuff that's going on at the moment. Yeah, I've been talking to Gary's mate, Chris, actually, who's taking care of the wiring on this thing. You know, the, the whole car is getting a, a custom wiring loom, essentially. Crazy thing. Fail. <laughs> yeah, before we have a look under the bonnet, have a look in the boot because you've sort of finished things there. Yeah, so these are the fasteners you're using for the boot lid Zeus fasteners, yeah? Yeah, the Zeus fasteners, just twist lock. Take a couple of seconds. Yeah. And it's off. And all, all this stuff, uh, you were saying, this, uh, all the carbon bits has got like the, the primer you use. Yeah, so that's, it still needs to be rubbed down and lacquered uh, and whatnot. There's just two coats of clear primer on there at the moment. So that's all got to be sanded back smooth. Yeah. Then it can be lacquered and then it'll look perfect. Yeah, that's why like things like this, you know, it's still a, a work in progress. Yeah, but, but yeah can't, can't fit cool. none of the fasteners, obviously, because everything's got to be sanded down. So. Yeah, yeah, cool. But um, as I say, the boot build is uh, <laughs> way more complete than last time we were here. I think it looks really cool in here. So it's, we'll show you that. It's, it's not perfect. You always say <laughs> that about everything. <laughs> yeah, I'll come around there. We've got a 60 litre fuel tank mounted in the middle. You can see that Gary's, you know, fiberglassed, um, you know, literally like a like a, a square hole for the tank. Everything's sort of made with, you know, its own cubby holes and stuff, which I think is really cool. So yeah, fuel tank there, swirl pot there, and then we've got the pumps over there, sort of diagonal that way, and then the battery over here, diagonal that way. And I think this all looks really smart. But you were saying that. The shapes of this is basically to sort of fit around the, the chassis underneath, right? Yeah, I made a square frame, but it's also got 45 degree angle bars coming off, yeah. which falls to the rear chassis of the TVR. Then it has a crash bar, which goes across the back as well. So if somebody does it, you like the back end, the whole back of the car is just not going to crumble to bits. Yeah, and that's why you've ended up with these sort of almost triangular voids. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's everything. just following the shape of the frame underneath. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if we look... Around this way, you can see like all the wiring for the lights is already in and the charging port and stuff. It's all really, really neat. All this still needs to be hooked up to the loom because 
you know wiring wise this is very much still a work in progress but yeah proper neat custom boot build awesome and yeah even though the tank doesn't look ridiculously massive <laughs> because it's you know sunk below the floor more than what you can see it sitting on top of the floor um that's a 60 litre tank so yeah 12 yeah, gallons so plenty should be more than enough yeah. hopefully but yeah i can't get over how crazy this rear end is <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get a lot of stick oh yeah that's, that, that's all part of the fun though isn't yeah it? it is it is definitely the more people hate it the more it gets modified <laughs> although one nod to sort of how rally cars actually were is the uh little boot spring things so uh yeah <laughs> but other than that everything's just nuts Right, so as I've already mentioned, twin turbo LS <laughs> in this thing. And I think last time I was here, the engine was in, but there wasn't any no, I don't wiring really, or... Nothing was yeah, really hooked up, yeah. was it, no? But yeah, look at it now. <laughs> twin turbo LS set really far back. Turbos hanging off the front of it. Chris has been doing all the wiring and stuff uh, for this engine. Gary was saying to me earlier that he did have the coil packs mounted down here on this really nice carbon piece. But um, yeah, then when he ended up getting a plug and play loom for the engine, it was just better to mount them up there. They they would be mounted roughly there originally anyway, you were saying, right? Yeah, about inch and a half lower than that in the original position. The spark plug leads were hitting the exhaust. Oh, right, yeah. So you've like... Yeah, just, just welded bracket, some tabs on. Yeah, to raise them up a bit. But, but yeah, this is looking awesome. Proper tidy setup. LS with turbos hanging off the front. It's so cool. Loving all the sort of heat proof jacket on the turbo and you know heat wrap around the exhaust to you know, keep the heat away from the uh, other bits of the engine. But yeah, awesome. See the rad sitting in there. Have you got an intercooler fitted? Yes, yeah, yeah, in the front. See the yeah. intercooler there behind Gary's carbon grill. Yeah, this is nuts. And uh, yeah, way more complete than last time. And you are genuinely quite close to firing this thing up right yeah, it was probably realistically in the next few weeks next three or four weeks fingers crossed yeah yeah hopefully it's funny actually because chris was saying to gary that yeah you know you could just hook up a battery to the fuel pump hook up a battery to the ecu <laughs> and it's like <laughs> like nah just just wait until it's ready like don't rush things on my behalf you know i will be back down here to show you guys this thing running when the time is right. And what power are we looking at again? I know I know you're gonna end up with more power than you wanted. I can't remember the figure you I, said. I was looking at 650. Yeah, and but you've been told you can't have 650. By the tuner, yeah, he's, he just laughed. Yeah. So it's, it's probably anything seven to 800, more realistically. Yeah. But another guy reckons it could easily do a thousand if I wanted it to. Yeah. Just by adding more boost. Yeah, yeah. It's got the right cam in it now. It's got a stage two cam in it. Uprated valve springs, all new shells in the bottom end etc all that lot done to it so it's got it's got what it needs to make that power yeah so, that's the beauty with turbos the sky's the limit isn't it it's like yeah just that the, boost these i've seen these running a single turbo 12 pounds of boost 715 horsepower and we've got two turbos i'm going to run one bar which is 14 and a half pound yeah so it's got to be close to 800 yeah that's crazy and um you decided to go twin turbo ls just for the noise yeah just for the noise the looks <laughs> yeah and, and it's different <laughs> uh, every, everybody puts z techs and dura yeah. and all that lot in them all other v8s ford v8s rover v8s uh, ls they're cheap cheap to buy parts for yeah that's what people don't realize they're so common in america yeah you pick one of them engines up for about $200, $200 from the breakers and they're all the parts for them, they're cheap. Yeah, I've definitely seen like on YouTube loads of examples of people putting these LS motors in everything in America. Did this engine come from America? Did you get it shipped over? Or? It, it did come from America, come from a Silverado pickup truck, but it was already imported over when I bought it, so it was already here in the UK. Yeah. But yeah, it come from America. Yeah, <clears throat> oh, really cool. It's going to be an absolute weapon. And I've been told that I'm definitely going to be getting a passenger ride in this thing. I might let you have a go. <laughs> That's what he <laughs> said last time. He had to let me have a go. I don't know. <laughs> have you seen my videos? No. No, <laughs> <laughs> nah, this thing's nuts. Love it. <laughs> right, so I suppose it's now time to show everyone the party piece, Gary. So this is the wire that's uh, hooked up to two little motors on the rear wing. And Gary will just hook it up to this battery charger. You ready? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there it is. 
is. So, yeah, just, yeah, just turn them back around the opposite way. Right, cool. Obviously, I'm not going to go up and down that far on the road. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just show you the, the motors and stuff. So correct me if I'm wrong, Gary, but you've got two little motors here. I think it's a worm drive in there as well, which pushes the actual rod up and down. So, um, yeah, basically this motor's activated and then this shaft comes out the top there. Really cool. And the idea is that you can um, adjust the amount of downforce, um, although it does come up far enough for you possibly to have an air brake if you wanted to. If I wanted it to. Yeah, yeah. maybe. <laughs> but it's wiring it in is the hard Yeah, part. yeah, hook it up to the brake pedal. Yeah. But um, yeah, you were saying that where it rests at the moment, it's a bit too far that way. That's not quite right down at the moment. If I yeah. put it right down, that's right down. Yeah, and that's too far down. It, yeah, because if you look at it, it's, it's like leaning backwards slightly. Yeah. So you're going to modify how it's mounted or just No, put... just, just come up on the oh, next one. hole. Five sets of mounting holes here, so I'll just yeah. come into either the next one or the top one. Yeah. Then that'll give me the good starting position. Yeah. So then it'll never go too far back. Yeah, because you don't want that wing working the opposite way to what it should be. Otherwise yeah. it'll be lifting the back end instead of pushing it down. Got you. But yeah, it's got to be the only Mark One Escort. I know it's not a Mark One Escort, but the only Mark One Escort with uh, an active wing, if you like. <laughs> Definitely something else for the anoraks to moan about. <laughs> yeah, while we're around this side, we can uh, get a look at the wiring. Chris has definitely got his work cut out. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, you can see that it's going to run down there. Is that going to be That's sort of like under some trunking or something? Or? That'll have the braided sleeve in it, so yeah. it'll look like all the stuff from the oh, ECU. Yeah. So it'll have the same braided sleeve as that. Yeah, that's nice and smart, isn't it? Really cool. But we've got to come off. Well, there's going to be a few wires coming up here, yeah. which goes to the indicators, headlights, horn, and to the rear spoiler. So there'll be a loom, separate loom coming up there. Yeah. And another loom coming up the roll cage to feed the 12 switches. Oh, yeah, you've got the switches up here. I yeah. think that's a really cool touch. They're out of the way, but it is a, yeah. it's a cool touch as well. Like a McLaren. Is your start button going to be up there as well or not? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like a McLaren. And tube there for the fuel filler. He's got his fuel filler on the rear quarter panel. Which is, again, something that some people do do to them up on escorts. On a lot of the rally cars they yeah. do, don't they? But yeah. Not so much on the road cars, but nah. I couldn't use the original fuel filler position because the tank's too high, so the neck in the tank would have been higher than the actual yeah. filler port, so the fuel would have just run straight back out again. Yeah. As I say, the more you look at this thing, the more details you sort of see. And yeah, it's not finished yet. And I just love that it's dripping with carbon. It's got to be dripping with carbon if it belongs to Gary, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I'm getting right. Oh, that one, that one shuts easier. That oh, one. Right. <laughs> it's mad how like you don't appreciate this thing either when you see the pictures online. Like it's weird. It looks so different when you see it in person. Mm. Like it all. I mean, it's crazy and it's ridiculous. Well, from the but... from the pictures, you can't really see how wide the car is. Yeah, it's nearly six foot wide now. Yeah. The more you look at it, the more factory it looks. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, it doesn't look like it's just been added on. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, but you have put a lot of thought into it. It's not like you've just slapped a load of stuff on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Change your mind on the wing twice. I think you change your mind on the front end as well. Like, Yeah, I was going to use my old front spoiler, but because yeah. I made the wings wider, it wouldn't fit anymore. So that's yeah. why I just made another one. That's nah, nuts. I mean, look at all these little touches and sort of brake ducts where the indicators would be on a Mark 1 Escort because Gary's got the uh, aftermarket headlights that have the indicator function in them. Even the holes along the front panel here have got nice trim pieces on. I'm guessing they're going to be carbon eventually, are they? No. Oh, I, not... I, I have made moulds, but I tried to make them in carbon and they're a nightmare. Oh, okay. They're a real nightmare. Ah, they still look cool as they are in black anyway. And then, <clears> yeah, you can just see the in the cooler through there and stuff. Yeah, crazy. Really cool. Crazy build and a real good advert for don't what you're capable little, of. Don't little all right. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the latest additions, the uh, indicators. Would you say these were off again? Sierra style. Sierra. But obviously Sierra's would have been yellow. Yeah. And they're LED, so. Yeah. Yeah, you, you said you was thinking about the oval ones, but, but they're too big. Way what would they have been off? Focus, though. Yeah, Focus, KA, and yeah. things like that. They're about probably three inches long. Yeah. And they just look silly on the wing. Yeah, no, I think they look cool. And it's so cool, the exhaust pokes out the wing as well. <laughs> Crazy. As I say, everywhere you look, just uh, more craziness.
Right, now, as well as coming down to see what Gary's been up to with his build, I've also brought something with me that he's hopefully going to be able to improve on for me. So over here, I've got the wing that I showed you guys recently. This was actually sent to me by Ian because he no longer needed it for his Mark I Escort. And unfortunately, when I lined this up on Heidi, my Mark II Escort, it was, you know, not as wide as the wing that I've currently got fitted to her. But I could definitely tell that if it was wider, it might actually be a better wing to use on that car. And uh, yeah, Gary basically got in touch as soon as I uploaded that video to say that he might actually be able to make this wider or end up making a wing the same as this that's wider, right? Yeah, we'll use that one as a plug. Yeah. We can either extend the ends by using the Celotex foam, shaping it, glue it on, but then I'll have to fiberglass over the whole thing and then fill it, smooth it, paint it, and then take a mould off of it, or we could cut it straight through the middle. Right. Pull it apart to the width you want. Yeah. And then just put a section in the middle. Yeah. And do it that way. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of people who I've sort of mentioned, oh, Gary said he might be able to widen this, that's how they guessed you were going to do it, by cutting it in the middle. Yeah, the, yeah. the only problem we might have is the bolt holes that are in there now might line up with what you've already got on ah. your car now. Yeah. If they do, then we'd have to leave them where they are and we'd have to extend the end. Yeah. But if I cut it in the middle, they'll be too far apart and you yeah. have to do some more welding. Yeah, there is that. I mean, to, to me, whatever's easiest for you, do you know what I mean? But when we were sort of lining this up on your car earlier... Um, you mean, you mean uh, like that? <laughs> Look how much smaller it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, when we was lining it up earlier, I kind of liked the idea of extending the ends, but... As I say, it's whatever's easiest for you, really, isn't it? No, yeah, we can extend the ends. Just tell me how wide the car is itself to the rear quarter to rear quarter. Yeah. And I'll make it the same width. Yeah. And then uh, over here, I've got the end plates, which I didn't actually show in a video before. And yeah, I can cut out some carbon and make these whatever design I want, can't I, really? Um, and the brackets, actually, that came with this wing are exactly the same as the ones that came with Heidi's current wing. These are literally exactly the same. Um, the only problem with these is because the Mark II Escort boot lid is like at such an angle, I mean, even compared to a Mark I one, the Mark II one's like this, which then inevitably means that even with the full adjustment utilised, the wing sits too far back, but that's an easy modification to make. I can sort of drill another hole here, or you can mess about with these things, you know, make one of them longer and one of them shorter or whatever. So, yeah, the angle can be solved. Um, but, yeah... Gary has got a, a set of these brackets that look a lot better and are a bit taller. <laughs> so maybe maybe these might be um, an answer. Because these will make the spoiler higher up, which is cool, but also set further back as well, isn't it? Yeah. Because of the angle of these. So, uh, But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what you come up with with that and then we'll, we'll talk brackets got a couple to choose from even if i was to use these as a template and cut some out you know what i mean i think those ones will work fine on your on your car yeah they'll, they'll be fine ah cool they'll look better because the other ones i think just they're too low yeah and not set back enough yeah so they're still still internal of the body line yeah the idea you want it flush or just just slightly hanging backwards a little bit and so the other brackets will work perfect yeah and also now because this wing's now going to be wider than the one that's fitted to the car. So because the wing's wider, it's more crazy, so you want it sticking out. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's go big or go home, isn't it? Yeah. Is, uh, <laughs> is, is that how you operate? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, it's worth noting that Gary has been trying to persuade me to fit this wing <laughs> to Heidi. So all you lot that don't approve of Heidi's current wing, just imagine what she'd look like with this thing hanging off the back. I think I'd need a bigger garage. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, excited to see what Gary can do with this wing because uh, you're a bit of a wizard, it's fair to say, with all this sort of stuff. Yeah, quite so, handy with a bit of fiberglass. Yeah. <laughs> and carbon, so yeah, so, uh, we'll sort it out. Yeah, no, looking, looking forward to it, man. Thanks in advance. No worries. Most of the time when I come and visit Gary, <laughs> I don't leave here empty-handed, and today is no different. Over here, we've got a set of Mark II Escort carbon fiber quarter bumpers now these are not mine <laughs> because these actually belong to chris he's going to be putting them on his mark ii but next to those 
we've got a really cool fly-off handbrake. Now this actually did belong to John, who was here earlier on, and he's very kindly said that I can have this. So I'm gonna chuck this in Heidi, why not? I wonder if I can actually get this working with the nine inch rear drums, or if it's just gonna end up being an excuse for me to switch to rear disc brakes. Really, really appreciate John letting me have that. And Gary's also said that I can have this toe strap. I was actually considering welding like a captive nut into the front or whatever um, to run some sort of tow thing because if it's going to be a drift car and i end up smashing it up at a drift day then the tractor needs something to uh, pull on to drag me out of the ditch doesn't it so yeah happy days but yeah with that we do need to get out of your way i know you've got stuff to do this afternoon but as always massive thanks for inviting us down to no worries check out what you've been up to really looking forward to seeing what you managed to do with that rear wing and uh, I'll definitely be back soon for another update hopefully when this thing is actually running but realistically I'm sure I'm going to be coming back here at some point to pick up some more of Gary's really cool carbon fiber panels <laughs> all right well it's always cool catching up with Gary to see what he's been up to I have of course been following his build and what he gets up to on his Instagram but yeah, it's really cool to see his Mark I Escort coming to life. It really is close to being fired up for the first time. And um, yeah, it should be on the road very soon. And I'm very much looking forward to experiencing it myself from the passenger seat, although Gary is adamant that I should get a go in the driver's seat as well. Don't forget, if you're after any fiberglass or carbon fiber panels for your old school Escort or for anything else, definitely get in touch with Gary Ball. He's got an endless amount of molds already for Escorts, but he can literally make you anything. If you've got a part for him to mold from, then he can make you a replica of it in fiberglass or carbon fiber. He's really clever at what he does. And um, yeah, he's just a cool guy to deal with in general. So do let me know in the comments what you think about his build. I know it's not for everyone, but uh, yeah, I just love how crazy it is. It's gotta be the craziest Mark I Escort bodied car out there. Other than that, I'm gonna end this video here. If you did think it was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe if you're new. Feel free to follow me on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. I'll leave links to all of those in the description, along with my email address for anyone who wants to contact me. Check out my website and the Petrolhead Style website. I'll leave links to those in the description as well. Huge thanks, as always, to my patrons for your ongoing support. But other than that, until next time, from me and my beautiful girlfriend, Kat, thanks for watching.